Court documents say the couple is willing to pay a combined $20,000 along with two Cartier watches to have their exes killed. Now, the plot was revealed when they tried to hire a hitman, and that hitman was actually an undercover officer. The cops say Leon and Bell thought they'd been dining with a hitman, but Javier was really an undercover cop. So police spring into action, immediately reaching out to Valerie's ex-husband, Mac, to tip him off. He agrees to pose for photos like these, complete with a bullet wound to his head. Soon enough, Leon emerges from the bedroom. Valerie McDaniel remains behind bars after a judge denied her bond. She's accused of trying to hire someone to kill her ex-husband. Probable cause for your arrest, Ms. McDaniel. Bond is set at no bond. Court documents say McDaniel, who is a Houston veterinarian and mother of an eight-year-old girl, wanted her ex-husband, quote, taken care of. Police arrested McDaniel and her live-in boyfriend, 39-year-old Leon Jacob, on Friday. Both are charged with soliciting capital murder. Court documents show not only did McDaniel want to end her ex-husband's life, but Jacob wanted someone to kill his ex-girlfriend. Records show police arrested Jacob in the past for domestic violence, aggravated stalking, intimidation, and cyber stalking. He's accused of assaulting and stalking his ex-girlfriend in January. The Harris County District Attorney's Office says the exes were notified about the accused plot to kill them. Police worked with them both to stage a crime scene and took pictures to convince McDaniel and Jacob that their exes were dead. They were then arrested once they handed over the money to the hitman, who was an undercover officer. Now, court records say Leon Jacob wanted his ex-girlfriend killed because he didn't want her to testify against him in court when it comes to those stalking charges. Now, we did reach out to uh, McDaniel's hus ex-husband's family. They did not want to comment on this case. They did say that the eight-year-old girl is safe and with family right now. Hours ago, Valerie McDaniel Daniel posted a $50,000 bond and walked out of the Harris County Jail. Tonight, amid these serious charges, there appears to be plenty of support for McDaniel and for the veterinary clinic where she works. One message on the clinic's Facebook page reads, We support and love Montrose Vet Clinic 100%. Another reads, Macy and Holly are sending love to everyone at MVC and support to Dr. McDaniel at this difficult time. It's accompanied by a picture of two dogs. Well, following the pair's arrest in what investigators are calling a murder for hire plot, we're learning new details about the relationships of everyone involved and other relatives of theirs who have also had their fair share of run ins with the law. Channel 2 did some digging into other court documents to learn more about McDaniel and her ex husband. We've since learned she filed for divorce back in 2014, citing in Infidelity and discord or conflict of personalities. Also outlined in the divorce documents, McDaniel was to make a nearly $1.25 million payment in the split, and the couple divvied up several high end cars. She got the property where the Montrose Veterinary Clinic is, along with the River Oaks high rise condo. He got a property on Tiki Island. The two share joint custody of their now eight year old daughter. Could you have your attorney contact me? And then there's McDaniel's mother, who has a mugshot of her own. Psychologist Dr. Carol Busick was indicted by a Harris County grand jury back in 2015 on allegations of tampering with government records. She and her husband were charged with certifying psych evaluations when, in fact, the new hires had failed to meet professionally recognized standards. Busick pleaded guilty and got 10 years deferred adjudication, no jail, so long as she complies with her probation. Mr. Jacob is, is a well-respected doctor here in Houston, Texas. This is a terrible case, but we're going to be moving, moving forward and setting the record straight. 39-year-old Leon Jacob sits in the Harris County Jail, charged with solicitation of capital murder. Mr. Jacob was trying to get his ex-girlfriend killed. It's the end of a road riddled with trouble. In 2005, Jacob graduated from medical school in the Caribbean island of Granada. He came home to Houston and was admitted to a residency program at UT, but... In 2010, he left and his Texas Physician and Training Certificate was terminated. Jacob moved to Ohio and entered a residency program at Northside Hospital in Youngstown. He ran into trouble there too and was terminated in March 2011. Supervisors wrote he lied, 
lacked medical knowledge, and lacked professional behavior. He was put on probation, asked to seek a psychiatric evaluation, and later found to be an immediate threat to patient safety. Jacob sued the school and lost. In 2012, Jacob was arrested for burglarizing the home of a hospital administrator who testified against him in that lawsuit. He pleaded guilty. Then, in 2013, Leon's wife of 11 years, Annie, filed for divorce. Her attorney wrote, Leon is guilty of extreme and repeated mental cruelty without cause or provocation by Annie. In 2014, he was arrested in Illinois, where Annie lived, charged with stalking and cyber-stalking her. Jacob got probation. By 2016, signs of financial trouble emerged. Jacob filed for bankruptcy in Houston. In January of this year, new criminal allegations emerged. Jacob's ex-girlfriend claimed he attacked her. She got a protective order. He was charged with assault. Weeks later, on February 16th, he was charged with stalking the same woman. Then, at some point, Jacob met Valerie McDaniel, the popular Montrose veterinarian. She's a compassionate, caring person, very extremely good at her job, extremely bright. In 2016, she divorced her husband, the divorce attorney in that case, Leon Jacobs' mother. On March 8th, Jacob and McDaniel went to this Olive Garden restaurant on the Southwest Freeway. We were informed a couple of weeks ago regarding the defendants uh, trying to hire an assassin. We now know that Valerie McDaniel left a note detailing her final wishes and also sealed letters inside her seventh floor condo. She left those before apparently jumping to her death from that condo. Okay, March 25th, it's been a few days. I, I hope I don't repeat myself. Chuck told me later that he was going to try to help me, that he would try to get Mac to leave me alone. And uh, at the same time, he was, he was working to try to get Megan to go back to Pittsburgh. It's weird. Things, it wasn't like bam, 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 a progression. Things just gradually happened. There was talk all the time about this, and it just normalized things. It's so strange. It's hard to explain, but talking about somebody trying to, to quiet Mac and make him leave me alone just became like, oh, okay, it's, it's normal. <laughs> In retrospect, not so normal. And it just progressed. It's terrible. <laughs> and the one thing I hope people know and I hope comes out is that at one point when I was talking to the officer, I said, can't you just talk to him and make him change, make him be nice to me? And he cut me off real quickly and said, no, 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 no. He wasn't going to give me a chance to go to back down. So I would have, if he'd said that, I really would. I didn't want to hurt Mac. I never did. I'm so sorry about everything. I don't want to hurt anyone. Just me. That leaves Leon Jacob to stand trial solely for his role of hiring a hitman. Jacob is said to have loved McDaniel this morning. His attorney asked if Jacob could be released from jail to attend McDaniel's funeral. The judge refused. My client had requested to be permitted to attend the funeral, and uh, he won't be attending the funeral. Um, simply put, um, so we have a bond hearing tomorrow, and. Uh, Take it from there. And we asked George Parnum what happens in this case now that one of these co conspirators is dead. And he said at this point he's not sure what will happen as far as the case against his client, but he says it will, in fact, continue to go forward. So what did the judge say was his reason for not allowing him to go to the funeral? Well, Jacob McDaniel was uh, denied bond earlier in this case uh, because he had other outstanding issues with the court and with the judicial system. And so that is one of the reasons presumably that happened. This was something that happened be behind closed doors. But I can tell you that George Parnum went on to tell us that 
He believes it is uh, the right thing that Jacob is uh, not going to go to this funeral. He said that was given uh, some of, you know, because of some of the responses that her family members have made over the last few days. He believes that it's best that Leon Jacob does not attend the funeral. Daniel's arrest made national headlines just over two weeks ago, and tonight her death is just as shocking to the people who knew her. Tonight we've heard from her veterinary clients as well, and now we're hearing from a co-worker who had a strange feeling predicting something bad was coming for Valerie. By all accounts, the Montrose Veterinary Clinic here was Valerie McDaniel's life. Those who knew her here are now mourning her death. Though it's been days since the arrest of his former boss, well-known Montrose vet Valerie McDaniel, Robert Fisher last night had a frightening feeling. His gut told him something was wrong. I just had this really strange feeling about something. He called McDaniel's sister and ultimately thought his concerns were unfounded till he woke up to the news this morning of McDaniel's apparent suicide. That was it. Now I'll wake up and she's gone. Free selection is underway for the man accused in a murder for hire plot. The jury pool was just narrowed down from 80 people down to 12. Now opening arguments will happen tomorrow. We're told this case will hinge on audio recordings made by investigators. Leon Jacobs fate is in the hands of a jury. This week they'll hear both sides of a salacious convoluted story, then decide if he's guilty of hiring a hitman to kill his ex-girlfriend. I'm not this monster that the media has made me out to be. The former doctor talked to KHOU 11 anchor Len Cannon while in jail last summer. This whole issue relies on the recordings of conversations and uh, what the words meant. After Jacob and McDaniel were arrested, the story made national headlines. The media circus, one of the factors Jacob believes drove the beloved veterinarian to commit suicide. He, on the other hand, is fighting for his life. You know, I studied to be a doctor so I could help people not harm them. Um, it's just not something that's in my nature. The jury will have to decide beyond a reasonable doubt if Jacob is guilty, and the judge hopes to have that answer by the end of this week. Testimony getting underway today in the murder for Hyle trial of Leon Jacob. The first thing, of course, opening statements, really giving us a roadmap, an idea of where this trial could go. This is a photo stage to make it appear that one target of an alleged murder plot was successfully killed. This is the staged image of Megan Vericos, the ex-girlfriend of Leon Jacob. She is tied up to make it look like she is one step closer to her death. Prosecutors say Jacob wanted her dead so she would not testify against him in a stalking trial. He's guilty of solicitation of capital murder for both Megan Vericos and Mac McCain. And at the end of this trial, we'll ask you to reach that verdict. But defense attorneys say Jacob did not want to hurt his ex-girlfriend. He tried to get back in contact with Megan, but his pleas of love went unanswered. She ignored him. She refused to communicate back. City council member and bail bondsman Michael Kubosh says his then client, Jacob, contacted him wanting the name of someone Jacob knew as Zach. To be honest with you, I felt like I was talking to the devil himself when he was talking to me. It's just so, it's so, he was so aggressive. He did mention that he wanted them both dead. According to testimony, Jacob did eventually reach Motaz Azay, the man he knew as Zach, paying him more than $10,000 in cash and jewelry to make sure that Megan Vericos did not testify against him. He's always been um, on the track of actually killing Megan if it doesn't go his way. Did he ever actually physically say, I want her dead? Yes, he actually even uh, proposed a way to kill her, uh, potassium chloride to the heart. It was untraceable based on his words.